Hi and welcome to another very exciting tutorial. Today we're going to have a look at collision detection and physics in 2D game development with SpriteKit. And this video contains parts of a new Udemy course that I've created over the last weeks. And this course gives you a complete introduction into 2D game development with SpriteKit. The whole learning experience is centered around a real world game called Color Track that I've specifically created for this course. And you can download it for free from the App Store first. And by creating this game from start to finish, you'll learn how to create game worlds, how to add animations and particle emitters to your game and many best practice tips around collision detection and so on. And you can use all of that right away for your own games. So if you're interested in 2D game development with SpriteKit, then check out that link in the video description below. Feel free to take a look around the course description and have a look at the preview videos. And with that link, you can save about 160 bucks and get this course for just $20 instead of 180. But now let's have a look at how we can use collisions and collision detection and bit masks in SpriteKit. You have already learned a lot about collisions in theory, but you've never seen that knowledge put into practice. And that is what we're going to do with this small sample application that you're going to find in your exercise files. And what this app does is very simple. So just let me open that up. And you might have seen it that we have two balls here that are dropping to the ground, but only the red ball is actually colliding with the ground here and behaving according to the physics here uh, by still moving around with the rest of its energy from the fall. So this is what we are going to create. Let me just give you a quick overview about the code that I already created for you. So we are just creating two balls here in the game scene. This is one ball, configuring the ball, giving it a physics body based on its, its radius. And we are creating a second ball here in line 25, which creates a blue ball. Uh, again, we are configuring it. And again, we're giving it a physics body. And for the ground that we're creating in line 36 we have to find some spline points for the curve and again we're giving it a physics body and a restitution of 0.75 and we're adding all of these elements to our game scene and the game scene has its standard gravity value of negative 9.8 so this is the app that we have at the moment now how can we add collision testing to it we should maybe start with the categories defining them right as constants here in the property area of our class game scene and we have three categories. We have a red ball category, which is going to be an unsigned integer 32. And we are assigning a value here in hexadecimal code, as you've seen in the last video in the theory section. So you're assigning 0x, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 zeros, 1, 1. And now we could actually leave it at that or we can shift that bit zero positions to the left just to keep a consistent look in our categories here at the top. Then we have a, a blue ball category also you in 32 and here again 0x 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 1 and this bit is going to be shifted by 1 to the left. And again, the ground category, a u int 32, 0x, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 1. And we're shifting this bit two times to the left. And the values that we're getting here is for the first one, we get 1, 2, and 4 in the decimal system. So what we can also do, because as you have seen, um, the leading zeros here are, well, it's a bunch of leading zeros. So what we can do is instead writing this, we can also writing 0x1 every time. So let's just quickly do that. That's just the short form for what we have just done, but you have seen it in theory and you know what that means. And I'm going to add some tabs here so that it looks consistent. And now we have three different categories for our three 
different physics bodies. The ball, the red ball, the blue ball, and the ground. And now we need to assign these categories in order for our experiment to work. So right after we added the last sprite to our game scene line 44, I'm adding some code using the ground first of all, accessing it its physics body and giving it a category bit mask. And what we want to assign here is the ground category. So now the ground is, or the ground's physics body can be identified by the ground category. Now let's use the red ball, access its physics body and access its collision bit mask. And now we need to ask the question, with whom do I want to collide? So we're, t we're taking now the perspective of the red ball. And of course we want to collide with the ground. So I'm assigning the ground category. And for the blue ball, let's also assign the blue ball a physics body and a collision bit mask. And let's choose something else, not the ground category. Let's choose maybe 0x1 and shift that five times to the left. So just that we do not have a, a category that we have assigned. So now that we have this code, let's run this in the simulator and see if the result that we expect occurs or that we see what we expect. And now only the red ball should collide with the ground and the blue ball should fall right through it. So let's see what happens. And indeed, only the red ball collides with the ground. And now, instead of setting the balls, blue ball's collision bit mask to 0x and shifting the bit five times to the left, we're also assigning the ground category here. And let's just run this again real quickly. And now, both balls are colliding with the ground. And this is exactly what we wanted. Now for the last part of this example, I'd like to show you how we can react based on a collision. Taking action as soon as a ball collided, let's say the red ball collided with the ground. So as you've seen in the theory video, what we need to do is adopt the SK physics contact delegate. And this is what we just did by adding that to our class. And now that we are adopting this protocol, we can also use a function of this protocol, which is did begin contact. So I'm adding that right below our did move to view function, and I'm keeping it empty for now. We're adding some code right now. And what we need to do now is, and let's do that right at the top of did move to in line 19, I'm taking self and the physics world and access its contact delegate. And here we need to assign self since we just adopted the SK physics contact delegate and we're dealing it with it in this class. So we're assigning self. And now that we have the ability to work with that delegate, we can set our contact test bit mask. And now we could use the ground, for example, access its physics body and access its contact test bit mask. And you need to be very conscious about the use of the contact test bit mask because it costs performance if you do that too often. So if you do not need to know something about the intersection of two objects and you do not need to take action, then don't use the contact test bit mask. And what we want to assign here is our ground should collide with the red ball category and tell us about it. Give us a notification about its intersecting with a red ball. There's still a small problem because we did not tell our ball's physics body that it should actually have the red ball category bed mask. So let's take our red ball and access its physics body, access its category bit mask and tell it to be a red ball category. Now this should be all the definitions we need and let's now move to the did begin contact function and add actually pretty much the same code as you've already seen in the theory part starting with the definition of a collision constant here of type u in 32 and what we need to do now is to perform a bitwise or with the two bodies that are part of this contact or this collision and we're getting these two bodies by using the contact parameter from the did begin contact function and this contact parameter is an sk physics contact object which holds a body a and a body b so we're using the body a 
access its con uh, category bit mask, perform a bitwise OR with the contact and the body B and its category bit mask. And there is going to be a result of this bitwise OR, but this isn't too interesting for us since we just want to compare it against what we define. So we are using now an if statement using a co the collision that we just created and now we are comparing it against the result that we actually want to check for. We want to see if the ground category collided with the red ball category. So we are again performing this bitwise OR and if both of these expressions, the collision that we saved here in our constant has the same value as this bitwise OR, then we definitely have a collision between the ground category and the red ball category. And this is something that we can print telling it to uh, collision with red ball occurred. All right. Now, this is how we test it and this is how we take action. You could add um, some animations here, you could increase the score here or whatever. You could add else if statements for different checks for different collisions and this is how this works. And now let's see if it works by running it in the simulator and check if we get our print statement in the console and indeed for every <laughs> for every instance where we touched the surface um, with the red ball, we actually get this notification, this print statement. And also we only get that with the red ball, as you can see here, not when the blue ball falls and jumps around here. And we can um, also test that again by removing the blue ball from the uh, scene, run this again. And let's see if we get the same result and as you can see, we get even more um, results here because the blue ball doesn't kick the red ball from the screen. So now you've seen in practice how you can deal with collisions, why you should define category bit masks, how to assign them to the collision bit mask, to the category bit mask, or even the contact test bit mask, how to work with the bit begin contact function. And now it's time that we put this little demo into our game and think about how we can use all of that collision stuff in the game that we want to create.